Hello, I'm Ingrid Willinge and a warm welcome to Media Week. Ahead on the program today, it's a packed up show because it's been a big week for media results, of course, with outdoor advertising and Nine Entertainment as well in focus. We'll delve into what it means for the next 12 months in the media industry a little later in the program. Plus, Pacific magazines to close the print editions of four titles. We'll tell you who got the chop a little later as well. But first, our co-host James Manning, editor and publisher of Media Week, of course, is here to take us through all those stories and more. More. And of all the media sectors we cover on Sky Business, radio has arguably been affected less from digital disruption than any others. Well, rejoining us this week to look at the sector and the latest radio ratings is Cathy O'Connor, Chief Executive of Nova Entertainment. Of course, Nova Entertainment owns and operates the, the National Nova Network, Smooth FM in Sydney and Melbourne, talk stations 5AA in Adelaide and Star 104.5 on the central coast of New South Wales and has three digital radio stations as well. So lots to talk about. Yes. Uh, Cathy, thanks for joining us on Thank the program. So I guess your visit's been pretty well timed this week for, for, for talking up the station because, of course, Smooth FM cements its position as number one FM in in Australia's biggest radio market. You must be happy with that. Yes, we're very, very proud of Smooth FM. So it's, um, I think it's not, I wouldn't say beyond our expectations, but we're just so optimistic about the radio station because it just keeps, um, through consistency really, delivering mm. and growing and growing uh, in, a, in a reasonably competitive marketplace. Mm. So I think it's a vote for consistency. Yep. Uh, it's probably also a vote for just doing something different and I think the radio sector is very competitive and so you get a lot of investment, particularly in that hit radio space. And Smooth FM's being able, being able to come in as the last sort of uh, relaunch of an FM station yeah. in full and just do something a little bit different. And isn't it interesting to see how uh, over a sort of four year period it's, it's, it's built its way to number one. Mm -hmm. I think when we, when we first spoke to James about the radio station, uh, one of our team at the time said it'll be a 6% <laughs> in Sydney and uh, he was talking about the first year target and we all, we all went back and went, OK, we better get on with it. <laughs> um, so to be sitting here at, uh, you know, 9.6, number one in Sydney... Uh, Good effort. Is, yeah, it's a great effort. We're going to go through some of the, uh, the ratings for each market in a little bit, but, but first off, just on that number one, I mean, I'm right in thinking uh, it's often where you rank in the market as much as the share you have that, that sort of affects the dollars. If some people go into radio, they might say, look, we'll buy the top two stations or the top one in that demo or whatever, so that top ranking is perhaps more important than the share. Mm. Well, I think depending on which part of the revenue sector you're talking about, when you're talking in the direct advertising space, there's certainly a great uh, benefit in being the number one station. You're able to talk mm. directly to businesses with that sort of wonderful reputational credibility of being Bragging a market ones. leader. <laughs> That's right. And, and, of course, small businesses are often listening to Smooth. Mm. So we found enormous growth uh, in that direct sector. From an agency point of view, they, they're clearly more interested in the demographics. And uh, 2554 is where we're seeing increasingly the bulk of agency revenue going for radio. So Smooth is sitting right in that sweet spot. It's interesting, though, because we talk a lot about disruption of the media space on this show, but it seems radio has been less disrupted than the rest of, of the media industry. And I heard some analysts we had on the show the other day saying it's all the Sydney traffic, people sitting in their cars <laughs> for, for longer. But, I mean, what do you think of that? And, and I guess how the radio space differs from the rest of the media industry. Why? Sure. Why is that? Well, I think if we look at what digital does to radio, it gives it more avenues to deepen the connection it has with listeners. Mm. So I think first and foremost, uh, the content has to be relevant and connecting with the people in metropolitan regional Australia or the audiences wouldn't be growing as they are. So I think that demonstrates that there is still really good investment in content in this country in radio and that's being rewarded by, you know, a very robust listener. Commuter times play a role within car listening, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, and then, of course, digital platforms, which allow us to reach consumers in other ways and remind them what's happening on the radio and create this wonderful two-way exchange between radio brands and, and a, a lot of places where, where consumers increasingly are, such as social media platforms and so forth. So we see that digital platforms have probably enhanced what we do, while also the fundamentals of listening to audio are still very sound. And I think in advertisers' minds and investors' minds, there's still a logical place for radio in the future. They they can see its utility in cars. They can mm. see its utility in regional communities. And that's resonating with advertisers as well. Cathy, we've talked a lot about digital on the show over the years, but um, do you think you could get that smooth brand away as a digital? Because you operate in other markets, don't you? Outside of Sydney and Melbourne, it's a digital brand. Is there some upside there for it, do you think? Well, of course, it, smooth is, a, is a, a, an analogue 
brand in Sydney and Melbourne, but it exists on DAB Plus mm. in Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth. And it's doing reasonably well in those markets for, you know, that technology. So obviously as digital radio continues to expand its listener base, then we expect Smooth will grow with that. And uh, if we could find any more FM stations to put Smooth onto <laughs> in those three markets, we'd be right there. But um, that looks um, unlikely Is in the short term. anecdotal information that people, when they buy a car with a digital radio, do they venture outside the traditional analogue stations? Well, of course, there is listening to the brand new digital only stations, mm. and we can see that in our GFK data. So it does happen, yeah. It does do, happen, yeah. but we but we obviously see growing audiences mm. for the established brands. Mm. So so really, what we what we see on digital is is that you know the, the established analog brands are the ones that rate more highly. Yeah. But there is now certainly a level of sampling for the new digital only stations. It seems it's this big focus on cross platform, which obviously is necessary, including your upcoming Smooth Festival of, of Chocolate in September. Just tell us a bit about that and how you. Um, I guess how important that cross-platforming is for the brands as well. Well, I think it's very important because it's really what advertisers are looking for as mm. well. So for, for us as content makers, it's, that it's a way to create further touch points and deeper relationships with your customer and in turn allow marketers mm. and brands to capitalise on, on that connection that you have. So cross-platform really is media. I don't, I don't think it's some, a, a new strategy. I think it is the strategy. Yeah. And really, so for us, it's about building out our own smooth and Nova digital platforms and equally looking for ways that those platforms can uh, be used for creating unique um, channels for marketers and brands themselves. So things such as Coles Radio, which is you know, a standalone, brand-new, custom radio station yeah. for a big brand and you know we were able to sort of use that um, combination of our asset and, and, and their brand to create effectively a very successful mm. brand new digital only radio station. Are there any challenges for the sector by a commercial radio Australia? I mean you're a long term board member, former chair, um, what, what, what's on their agenda now? I am feeling so optimistic about Commercial Radio Australia and the board that we have at the moment. I think it's it, it's fantastic. We've got a few new CEOs in uh, in the industry, and we are having genuinely constructive conversations around things like the connected car, things like programmatic trading, all those yeah. sort of digital um, forces that that are going to impact you know so our plenty, industry. Plenty that the board members agree. Plenty going on, and I think mm. you'll find toward the end of this year some nice announcements coming out from the radio industry, and you're going to see more and more of radio working as a medium, yeah. in as much as we're also going to be pretty active trying to promote and grow our own brands. And speaking of that, media law reform, of course, com comes up, and we know that there's, there's changes sort of taking place, or, or at least under the surface at the moment. Look, are there opportunities that you're seeing from that for, for Nova Entertainment? Are you sort of on the lookout? I think it's probably fair to say that radio as an industry, because it is doing well, as you, as you rightly point out, it's an attractive asset for anyone looking, you know, looking at a, at, a, mm. at a different marketplace. But equally, the assets are very tightly held because they are so successful and they're still growing. So, um, you know, I think obviously in a cross-platform world, radio sits very well mm. in any mix of mediums because it's a great companion medium. Um, but to the extent that the existing owners of these wonderful businesses are prepared to part with them, uh, I guess only time will tell. Yeah, that'll be the question. Well, we better get into radio ratings, and if you're happy to stick around, we will uh, keep you on for this, Cathy, because it's been a big uh, one for Sydney. There you go, 2GB on 12.2%. Uh, Smooth, there you have it, Cathy, on 9.6%, as we spoke about. Yeah, look, you've got uh, two stations in the top five there, Cathy. That, that's always good to see you and ARN. Um, nothing from your big competitor there, Southern Cross or Stereo, <laughs> near the top of the chart. Well, it, it, as I said, it's a, it's a, a very competitive market with some yeah. really nice established shows. And, of course, you know, Sydney is, is so important for any national uh, radio company mm. because so much of the sentiment is driven out of the big markets of Sydney and Melbourne. But Smooth, uh, obviously, is uh, beyond... Uh, you know, beyond our expectations, and we actually think there's further upside. So, uh, I'll so put you it... think we could see it up the top there of number one FM in, in, in Sydney and maybe eventually Creeping Melbourne for a while? Uh, I would. Uh, well, <laughs> let's let's say let's go to double figures, and then we'll have a think about what's ahead of that. All right, well, you're not far off double figures right now. So let's take a look at Melbourne uh, as well. See where. Uh, everyone's tracking and obviously Smooth FM in there as well, 7.8%. But you've got 3AW at the top there, James, 14.4%. Yeah. yeah, look, it's a traditional leader. Fox and Gold sharing top spot. Uh, Cathy, we don't see Nova in the top there. You're on a bit of a rebuild there with your breakfast show. That's what right. stage are you at? So we changed our breakfast show in January of this year. So Chrissy, Sam and Brownie, our new show. Uh, and five surveys in, we're really 
happy with the way it's gone. Uh, probably more than happy, actually, because it's only grown its audience, and often we do see with new shows, it takes listeners a while yeah. to, to actually respond. So it's looking very, very positive, and I think you'll see further growth from them the further out we go this year. All right, let's take a look at Brisbane as well and see how Brisbane's tracking... Uh, on the screen, Nova, top spot there, 14.4%. So that's good to see for, for you, Cathy. Yes, it's a record share for Nova up there. This is looking like a setup, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I well, that's why we got well. you on. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Brisbane again, 97.3, a very strong radio brand. I think mm. probably those two stations over the recent history of Brisbane really have had been without competition. And we see sort of a continuation. You're a shareholder in 97.3 anyway. Yeah, we might be as well. So you're, <laughs> you're very happy about that, uh, Adelaide. Yeah, let's bring up Adelaide and take a look. Again, Mix. Uh, Mix has gone back. Mix had a bit of a troubled year um, in 2015. They did some, um, you know, reprogramming there. I think they've ironed out some of the bugs, which look to be uh, been successful so far. Nova's had a pretty good time with there, though, in Adelaide recently too, hasn't it? Yes. Look, it is more competitive in that hit space uh, in Adelaide, but I would say that um, you know, Mix certainly has been a, a historically a very strong station. It's yes. got a nice market market position and we obviously see 5AA as a commercial talk proposition still very strong in that market as well. Yeah. Alright, let's take a look at Perth as well to end up uh, the States. There's Perth Mix as well on top there. Yeah, you've been really firing in Perth with your breakfast show at Nova, hasn't it? It's been yeah, number one for quite a, a while then. It's been a leading show for, for some time. Uh, been on the air for a long time. Obviously, yeah. Perth are, have grown up with Nathan, Nat and Sean. We're very proud of their achievements and that really underpins the strength and the growth that we've had over there. Yeah, 96 FM is the new ARN acquisition over there, being going through a little bit of pain as they try and find their feet in the market. Yeah, well, that often happens under... They've been spending money. Is there more money being spent in Perth? Yeah, been... it's, a, it's a competitive market. We, we sort of see Ostero very active over there, mm. as are we and as are, as are 96 FM. Uh, so, you know, I think it's a, it's a strong market. It's the third largest in Australia and therefore... Sorry, fourth largest. But therefore, um, you know, I think we've, uh, we've got a lot to play for over there. But really happy with the way it's gone for Nova. All right, unfortunately, we're out to get time. your insights. One more from James. No, no, I was just saying it's, it's ready to get Cathy in. Yeah. The week we've been doing so well. That's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's why we got you, so thanks so much for Thank coming you. on, Cathy. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Cathy O'Connor there, Chief Executive of Nova Entertainment, joining us live. We will take a quick break now on the program. Coming up next, though, reporting season continues with several media players revealing their performance over the past year. Details with James Manning next. Boys Town is now your town, and here's your view at Woolloomooloo. Or choose your Gold Coast home with direct ocean access. Get your ticket at yourtown.com.au. Where do you spend the most time sitting? Your couch? Your car? What about your office? All that time spent in a chair has made sitting the new smoking, because your body was built for more than sitting. It was built to move, and Veridesk was built to help get you moving by letting you work sitting or standing as much as you need to throughout your workday. Veridesk arrives fully assembled. I was actually quite surprised how easy it was to set up, put it on top of the desk, and it was ready to go. Veridesk instantly converts your current desk into a height-adjustable standing desk, effortlessly raises and lowers, and transforms your workspace into a healthier, more productive environment. It is transforming the way I do my job, and that makes me very happy. Go to au.veridesk.com to find the Veridesk size and model that's right for your office space. Veridesk usually ships within 24 hours and comes with a truly no-risk 30-day money-back guarantee and free shipping. Go to au.veridesk.com. That's V-A-R-I desk. Veridesk. Work elevated. Make your super dad's day at Golf Box. Callaway gloves, six pack, now $49. Tailor made set of eight irons, half price, $4.99. Ashworth shoes, just $99. Or make dad's day with a Golf Box gift card. Now at golfbox.com.au. The Audi A3 Runout is now on. Purchase the Audi A3 Sportback with style and technique packages from only $41,000 drive away. The Audi A3 Runout. Timing is everything. Joining me is Michael Kadari from COSEC. Michael, why is it do you think that so many wealthy and successful investors have placed their trust in you? John, trust is built over time. In the past three years, we've been able to demonstrate live on national television a track history. We've picked TPG Telecom, Ramsey Healthcare, Domino's Pizza, ResMed, Certex, Cockley. It's this performance that's led to so much trust and confidence in us. So I notice you've outperformed the market on a regular basis. Why do you think it is that you are so successful? 
Success is built around consistency and strategy. The strategy we use at COSEC is through a unique filtering system. It's this unique filtering system that helps us pick the right opportunities at the right time. What's your secret, Michael? You've got to live and breathe the stock market. So if you live and breathe it, you must have a stock for John. I'll tell you that in a sec, but for the rest of you, go to cosec.com.au and register for your free report today. This week the Northern Territory go to the polls to find out who looks the best in short sleeves and a tie. That's who they call their leader. The B team will take a week's break, but we'll be back the following week, 9pm Sky News Live. Welcome back to Media Week. Well, reporting season continues and there's been some more big names in media companies revealing how they performed in the 2016 financial year. So here's Ben Lebrun from Options Express for the latest numbers. An interesting performance from some media stocks today that reported their earnings, in particular Southern Cross Media, which has come in much stronger than what the market was uh, anticipating. They've seen growth in uh, all divisions of their business and they're also anticipating some uh, ad revenue growth, which has been a very, very rare story uh, right across the media spectrum uh, so far in earnings season and, uh, well, for at least the last 24 months and possibly longer. Uh, so shares having a pretty good day for Southern Cross Media at this stage. Uh, uh, looking at uh, a, a free-to-air broad broadcaster, of course, in Nine Entertainment. Now, this company has been in a, in a wading through a sea of troubles uh, in the last uh, financial year. Of course, the 60 Minutes debacle that weighed on the uh, earnings number today. That uh, was an extra seven million dollars worth of costs. Uh, the profit numbers were down 15 percent. And uh, on the flip side to what Southern Cross was saying, they're actually seeing uh, the ad markets to, say, to be flat to mildly negative moving forward. Uh, of course, they've also made some poor programming choices, including Renovation Rumble and the briefcase in recent times. So it, it really has been uh, inundated by bad news, unfortunately, for Nine and, of course, uh, wading off uh, market share concerns with uh, Seven, obviously, uh, after the Olympics has been a big issue for them and one that they, uh, that they broached today in the earnings numbers. Well, back to James Manning, editor and publisher of Media Week, our co-host, of course. And, and your take on those couple of results in particular, Nine and Southern Cross? Yeah, look, Nine was interesting. They talked about, as Fairfax did recently, they're tipping a bit more cash into Stan, mm. about another $30 million before they get cash flow positive in 2018. Um, Hugh Marks talked a little bit about cricket rights. They want to go after the BBL. It's all they, about sport, They want to have all the <laughs> cricket, so they're going to be happy with that. Look, digital revenue is still a small part of the business, uh, but there's, you know, potentially a lot of upside there in the future. I talked to him about it this morning. Look, it's hard to separate that digital from the TV yeah. because they both rely on each other a lot. Um, not a lot of issues for uh, Grant Blackley at Southern Cross Stereo. Seem to be going reasonably well. Mm -hmm. A lot of upside if they manage to keep Hamish and Andy. We'll find out next or in uh, October, I think. Is what's that when going they resign? There. Well, I, I think we'll find out. Yeah, okay. there's going to be a big announcement. So get ready for that Could one. Could they go to a breakfast slot? No, I don't think. It's... Look, you'd, they'd love it to, but look, they've got a TV show on Nine next year, so I don't They're think not that's, that, that's not going to happen. Right. And if they get uh, Two Day FM firing again, which is still underperforming. Mm. All right, I want to also talk about APN Outdoor because they lowered full year earnings forecasts, pointing to a significant reduction in market activity. The warning coming as the company posts half year net profit of $19.5 million, up 49% on year, but also rival Omedia. It's confident of meeting its full year guidance after lifting profit over 50% in the first half. Beginning of the year when we gave our guidance, we always said that, uh, you know, it was going to be an interesting year because uh, generally without a home, uh, when you have an early Easter, an election and uh, an Olympic Games, you have some trading ups and downs. And to, from our point of view, everything's played out exactly how we thought it would. And as you would expect when an Olympic Games is on, the trading's a little subdued, but uh, our forwards into the last quarter are, are, are tracking where we expect them to be. So we're pretty confident about, uh, obviously very confident about our guidance that we've at the start of the year. A couple of announcements out of News Corp this week as well, James. Um, firstly, the $1 million in, in youth employment initiative they've yeah, announced. People are advertising to employ youth. They can get a deal for News Corp, so some free advertising. And they're giving um, 250 News Corp internships, which I think is amazing. And I'm surprised it didn't create a little bit more buzz in the market. Yeah, OK. Yeah. But, I mean, is, so is that for the next... Is that just a one-off? I'm not one sure of the actual details, though. Yeah. yeah but if, whether it's, you know, over a number of years. But we yeah. might find out uh, there's a News Corp um, come together up front this week, so we'll be talking to Michael Miller and we'll get some detail on that. Right, we'll chat to you about it next week yeah. then. Also, News Corp appointing Nicole 
Sheffield to a new role. This yeah, is a expanded big her role. Yeah, look, she's been a great exec in there. She's been running the News Life media business. That's had a lot of their digital properties in their magazines. Her role's now expanded to take in all the digital properties uh, company-wide. Um, now, there's been a few other appointments this week. Yeah, look, uh, Peter Clark. She's yep. appointed Peter Clark, who was running uh, Melbourne down there or running um, some of the commercial operations down in Melbourne. He's going to join Nicole in that uh, NDA, a DNA business, yep. they're calling it. And Peter Zavik's rejoining news, I think, for the fifth time. So I hope they manage to hang on to him this time. He's uh, left Pacific Magazines. Tim Warner confer confirmed that earlier this week. Going to work as, um, I think, managing director of their commercial down in Melbourne. OK, so a bit of a restructure, really, in that. It is. Yeah, and they, they take, you know, uh, Michael Miller's talking about it again as, you know, positioning the company best for the future. Yep. We'll hear about some more of that in next week's show too. All right. Also, um, Pacific Magazines to stop printing four of its titles, four of its print titles. Which ones are these, James? Yeah, well, look, uh, Practical Parenting is going digital only, as mm -hmm. is Bride to Be. So they'll still exist as brands. Um, your gardening is stopping completely, so right, that's no going, digital, no digital, no print, nothing. So they're not even passing it over to another publisher. Mm -hmm. And uh, Prevention Magazine, they're giving up the license, so that's a Rodale title they licensed, okay. um, and that'll. I think that might appear in the market elsewhere because it's, it's not a bad magazine. An interesting model in the US. They've gone to uh, advertising free mm. in the US, so they're just relying on uh, reader subscriptions. Do you think this is? I mean. Obviously, it's a trend we're going to see more of in the magazine industry, but is this sort of a clean-out for Pacific Mags? We probably won't hear of many more titles going digital for a, for a while. Yeah, I think so. I think they've probably done it all. You know, let's bunch all the bad news yep. together, then move on. They're going to appoint a new managing director down there, so Peter won't be... A you know, replaced as such with a chief executive. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a managing director, which is the rung down, I guess. I want to talk about online ad spend as well. Obviously a big thing we talk about a lot, but cool. mobile, how much mobile accounts for as well? Because this is obviously what everyone's interested in at the moment. Yeah, total ad spend for the financial year was close to $7 billion. Nearly one in every $2 spent on advertising now goes to digital. Mm. So it's pretty massive. It's uh, not that surprising, though, is it, anymore? No, it isn't. But, again, we often talk about, you know, if people sort of vacated some of the old media too quickly, you know. Yeah. A mix of both seems to work best for a lot of people. Mm. Uh, digital yeah, accounts for close to 30%. Um, mobile is 72% of that 30%. And at, if you want to dig a bit deeper and split that up, smartphones get 67%. And tablets, which surprised me, account for 33% yeah, of the big. spend. So People still using tablets for... Hey. <laughs> there you go. No, <laughs> tablets are useful. All right. But, yeah, a third of, third of that ad dollars, those mobile uh, ad dollars going to tablets. All right. Let's um, talk about Tinder as well sure. um, on the program. Why not? Perfect, perfect thing to talk about because it signs its first media deal in Australia. Yeah. And what better to do with what Bachelor of the Year? Yeah, so Cosmo, <laughs> uh, Bauer Media picking up the Tinder dollars. And you've, so for people who want to register in that Clio Bachelor of the Year, they can do so, um, attach it to their profile on Tinder. <laughs> Really? So they can do it directly through Tinder? Yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, it, really, it really involves a Tinder brand in the, um, in the exercise, I guess. There which you go. Is the point. That is new media, isn't it? All right, let's sure. take a look now at uh, television ratings for week 34, kicking it off with free to air. Yeah, there you look, have it. Um, Seven a, news. a lot of news. Um, not quite as much Olympics in the top ten as there were last week, partly mm. reflected by the sort of... There wasn't as much interest in the second weeks of the Games as there was in the first, which is often the case when you get the swimming as always in the first week of the Games. Why so. is there so much news in, in the top ten at the moment? Well, no again, I, shows to... yeah, but because a lot of the other networks backed off during the Olympic Games, so their their big um, brands weren't there, so yeah. that just pushes all those news bulletins to the top. I think. Yeah, there you go. All we'll right. See that change a little bit next week. Okay, let's take a look at subscription television. This is the top five sport. NRL topping it. You've got some AFL in there as well. Yeah, let us a cup uh, turning up there in the middle. The first of those three games. That's not surprising. Then and no. two, two NRL games. We're a week games. away from finals for um, both those codes. Yeah. Okay. And then non-sport, top five. Uh, you've got the Kettering incident, which comes in number one. That's yeah, been pretty be, successful. Yeah, that'll be the final episode of that one. Um, and then a lot of uh, Fox 8 content. Still a movie up there, Bridge of Spies. OK, there you go. And the recruit rounding out the top five there. Um, now, speaking of television, seeing ourselves uh, talk about this, the release of a five-year report into diversity in television drama. And this is done by Screen Australia. Yeah, look, there's been lots of calls for, you know, we should be representing the, the population makeup of Australia more in, when the country's portrayed on screen. So mm. Screen Australia analysed 199 dramas that have been screened over the past five years. 
18% of the cast members of those dramas were from a non-Anglo background, when the population of Australia is 32% from that mm. sort of non-Anglo background. So they're just saying, look, it's probably, it's probably that's a good reason we should be, you know, be more representative of the population. And they noted, look, there is an appetite for change out there in the industry. They expect, they expect those numbers to change dramatically over the next few years. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on. And switching gears a bit to the project, Carrie Bickmore, of course, the big hair colour change. Yeah. But there's no deal with, with Garnier for the project, right? This is very specific Correct, to her. Yeah, look, um, Carrie's sponsored by uh, Garnier. She's sort of a spokesperson for the brand and um, seems to look a pretty good idea. To me, it was a bit unusual to have a, a newsreader as such, and some people said, well, is Carrie a newsreader or not? Journalist, she, she yeah. She reads the news bulletins on the, on the show. And Ten's always said, look, it's news done differently. Um, Craig Campbell, the EP, we spoke to him this week, and he said, look, we, you know, the, the presenters are all sort of individual uh, personalities. Yep. We don't mind if they mix it up a bit, but he said, look, the integrity of the, the editorial in independence mm. of the program, certainly not for sale, and Ten itself, or the project, is not getting any money from Garnier. Still gives it a good plug for the, for, for the yeah, brand no, or no, the project, no, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. But th then again, if people have been talking about the project a lot more this week, it's um, not bad for them either. All right, just one sentence on ABC International, because they signed this deal with Swiss and it was a bit controversial. Yeah, look, Swiss, also the Victorian government and Monash, but Swiss was the one that created the big attraction. And look, the ABC talked up the brand a little bit in the press release, which I'm sure Swiss is happy with, but people <laughs> just wondered, should they be doing that? All right, well, that wraps up the program, James. Uh, Fast-paced program today. Appreciate your time, Thanks, as always. Co-host James Manning there. We've got more news and analysis coming up next. Stick around.